Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a vintage cube draft here on the channel. We're battling it out on Magic Online, and what do we have? Pack one, pick one. I will. Novice Inspector is good in Murders at Karlov Manor, and it's solid in Vintage Cube. Palin Palantir is pretty good. Grizzlebrand can be a good reanimation target. There's a Wasteland, which can do some good stuff. Triomes are good if you're those colors, but it's not as early of a pick as a fetch land. Oliphant is pretty good. I'm tempted by Wasteland or Oliphant just for fixing. I'm just going to take Oliphant. It's like a kind of like taking a fetch land in some ways, and uh, this pack is pretty weak. Because if you get a dual land, you can go fetch that up. So if we get like a Rogren Triome later, we can go get that. Um, Luris is a great card. You can build some really sweet Luris decks. Doesn't go with our Oliphant at all. Uh, but I'm not really tempted to just like force a red deck because of this guy. I've got Force of Will as an option. Sheldock Isle as an option. Just a powerful land. So, I mean, Jetmuse Garden is the sort of card that goes well with Oliphant because it gives you like all three colors with your Oliphant land cycle. You don't really cast this, this much, that much. I think it's between Force of Will, Sheldock Isle, and Luris. Luris is really good, but I have to abandon the Oliphant. I think I'm just going to take Force of Will. It's really good to have free spells. And it just lets you go any direction. Force of Will is always going to be pretty good. But while we're waiting for our next pack, I'll break down what Vintage Cube is for those of you that have never drafted it. It is basically a collection of the best cards from Magic's history, all put together into one cube experience. Okay, so Inverter of Truth, Truth is the combo with Thassa's Oracle. So you like exile your whole deck, and then you play Thassa's Oracle and win. There is Natural Order, which can be pretty powerful. There is Brainstorm as a cantrip. There is Expressive Iteration as some card advantage. This pack is... Not giving me a huge direction. I could just take Brainstorm as a cantrip. It goes well with the Oliphant Shuffle effect. I'm not really seeing any huge like direction cards. There's Expressive Iteration as well, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pyrokinesis can be pretty good. Pick three, though. Brainstorm more expressive is my general thought. I'm going to take the Brainstorm. And now there is True Name Nemesis, which is quite good. There is Noble High Arc, which is quite good, though it's kind of far from where I'm currently at. Underground Sea. This is more of like a mid-rangey blue card. I kind of have mid-rangey blue cards, so Force of Will and Brainstorm aren't like particularly unfair. I mean, casting this for free feels pretty unfair sometimes. Uh, there is Phantasmal Image, which is good. I think it's between Underground Sea, Noble High Arc, and True Name. I'm just going to take the True Name. This card's pretty devastating in a lot of situations. And it's the only color that I, like, really know that I'm going to be, like, I think I'm going to be playing a blue deck. I'm not even sure I'm playing red. Fatal Push is pretty good. Underground Sea is pretty good. Take the True Name. Ooh, and now there's a Force of Negation, which is just another free spell, and a Pester Might, which could be good if I get Splinter Twin. Hollowed Fountain can be good if I want to go white. I think I'm just going to take Force of Negation, though. I've got some good free interaction to back up, like a True Name Nemesis Clock. This Oliphant was just kind of out of a weak pack that I didn't really want anything in. And I've kind of got just, like, plenty of directions I can go with this start. Okay, now there's Venser. More control cards. There is Kiki Jiki, if I really wanted to try and make Blue-Red work. This is the sort of deck that'd be good as a blue-red combo deck because I have a free counter spell to like protect my combo. Kind of just want to take Venser though. Kiki Jiki only really works with that one plan. And I already passed the Pester Might. Okay. Okay, okay. Now there is a Vendillion Click. Plays into that flash game plan. There's also a pest infestation, which is quite good, and a baleful strix. Vendillion click isn't particularly high priority a lot of the time, but it does play into my game plan pretty well. And trying to build a flash deck could be pretty fun, like instant speed functioning. Baleful strix is quite good. Pest infestation is really good. Maybe I'm supposed to take pest infestation. This feels like the sort of deck that Vendillion click could be good. In. I'm just gonna take a pest infestation though. I don't have a second color. This is easy to splash, and it can just win you the game on its own. 
Subtlety, another free counter spell. Yeah, like sometimes you have to just hit the powerful card. Like Reprieve could also be good in this sort of deck. I think I'm just going to take the fit, the last free spell. Like Rogren Trium wield. Sure. Novice Inspector also wield. I'll just take the Trium though. Fixing that I can fetch with my. Uh... So now we're going to start sorting by mana curves. This is like a five drop a lot of the time or a three drop. It's like a four. There's a four. This is a three. This is free, but we'll put it in the five slot. Mana Tithe can be good. There's also Flame Tongue Kava if I really want to go for like a kill spell. This can fetch some stuff, but it's not really, it's for, more for combo enabling. Mana Tithe is fine though. I already have the fixing for red, which is why I ended up audibling to the Flame Tongue Kavu. Celestial Colonnade. Sure, I now have a couple blue white lands. Phantasmal Image. Definitely can do some stuff. Unexpectedly absent, but yeah, sure. Blue White Control could be a place to end up. Blue White Control splashing green. I don't think it invigorates really where we want to be. Sure, maybe a sideboard graveyard card. I think having just powerful options is fine. Mendelian Click just doesn't really do as much as you need it to do a lot of the time. It's a three mana, three one flyer. Which is just like compared to like true name nemesis. Ooh, and Vendillion click last pick. I'm a genius. But yeah, getting it last pick is an indication of kind of the general power level. I could have just taken a uh, mana tithe there. But yeah. I think this deck is going pretty well right now. We got a couple blue white lands. We got one double white card. Any power? No, no power. But we do have a Misty Rainforest, which can be used to fetch our Triome. We're not going to be going for twin combo. There is also Stern Scolding, so Healy. Skyclave Apparition is really good. But we're just going to take a Misty Rainforest, I think. Rafine's Tower could also be pretty good in this deck. But Misty's also nice, especially if we want to splash green for Pest, because it gives us a green source. Palace Jailer's really strong. There's a Mana Vault, so like always keep an eye out for good mana cards. But I have so many color symbols. The only real card to ramp out is Pest Infestation. Thought Scour, Teferi, Brazen Borrower. I might just take the Palace Jailer. This card's excellent. And passing up on Teferi. I mean, double white is going to be hard in this deck, but... And I also might fall behind on board. This card is quite good when it works out. Yeah, I'm just going to take the Palace Jailer, though. Balance. Not really my, my card. Broadside Bombardier is pretty absurd. I'm not an aggro deck, though. Much as I would like to potentially just... Throw some, uh, I guess, true name nemesis is at people. I mean, this card can be good in a, if I could be a more proactive deck, but I'm kind of just, I've got all these free spells. And I don't really have creatures to put in play. I could take Sacred Foundry just to make my mana better with Oliphant. Gives me a second thing to search up with that. And then I could be really set up to splash, like just play pure three color. I think that could be pretty good. Just give myself as good mana as I can. I don't think I can really use balance. Dak Faden is pretty strong. I don't really have any to ramp out still with this. Sacred Foundry does good work. Treasure Cruise. Cryptic Command. I am heavy blue. Emrakul. This doesn't really do much for me. Um, I don't really use my graveyard, but I have a fetch land. Brainstorm goes into the graveyard pretty easily. I might wheel Thought Scour. I do love Cryptic Command, and I'm going to be a heavy blue deck. Just a matter of what, whether I'll be able to use it effectively. I think that could be a good reload card. I have a bunch of free spells, and so just being able to just get some card advantage is important, I think. Cryptic Command is so hard to cast. Especially if I'm trying to play three colors. I don't necessarily need to play three colors. I could just be like a heavy blue deck, but I have double white cards. Yeah, I'm just going to take Treasure Cruise. Oh, 
Okie doke. There is Kinnon, which is a combo enabler. Crucible of Worlds, which is kind of a combo enabler. We could take Ketria Triumph because it gives us a free green source almost that we can fetch with our Oliphant and our Misty Rainforest to play Pest Infestation. I'm kind of in for that. Fiery Islet. Kind of a nice just blue-red land. I don't need to necessarily play red. Take your time. You definitely don't want this and Treasure Cruise in your deck. Talisman can be okay. I think I'm going to take the Underworld Breach, though. This card has a lot of potential when things work out. I won't normally play it with Treasure Cruise, but there's some really good combos you can assemble with this. And uh, it's still mid-pack, too, so I could still just get, like, Brain Freeze, which is, like, a really good combo with this. Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal. So I'm just going to take the Breach. Upheaval doesn't really do what I need. But Fiery Confluence is quite good. I'm glad I have the option to play Red. Ledger Shredder. There's also Eagles of the North. Nikolai Bolas Preview card. This actually plays pretty well in my deck. It can fetch up a Sacred Foundry or the Triome. Third Path Iconoclast. I have kind of looked... I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be double spelling that much for this guy. I kind of just want to get my mana even better. This card wield. I could take Stern Scolding. I think I will. Early double white seems a little bit tricky. This seems like a really good sideboard card. Ooh, Teferi came back. Nice. Sure, I'll take Grim. Get lost now. We have kind of a nice little brew going here. We still have a lot of directions we could go. If we could get a green-blue dual land or something, that'd be pretty good. Okay, pack three. Hole Breacher is a winner. This card is fantastic. We don't have any way to really abuse it yet, but it's just really, really good. There's a lot of cards that draw cards in this cube. I mean, I would love to have one of these fetches. I mean, this card can get Triome, any of my Triomes, or my Sacred Foundry, or just a Plains. This one similarly can get one, get both of my Triomes. So a fetch land would be really good here. I mean, there's just so many lands. I hope I wheel something from this pack. Now there's Jace. Ooh, I got a Mox. I'll take a Mox. It's the one color that I'm not, ironically, so it's like the least helpful Mox, but a Mox is still a Mox. Still going to accelerate me. Jace the Mind Sculptor would be really good. Tropical Island is the perfect card for me because it really lets me play this Pest Infestation. I might not be able to play Pest Infestation. It's kind of ironic that it's the one Mox I can't really use. But still not complaining about a Mox. Currency Converter is really good in this deck. You might think, oh, but you don't have any discard. But I have this as a Cycler. This is a Cycler. Um, this doesn't count as discarding, right? Exile, yeah. Hmm. So I guess I only have those, which still seems pretty good. This Malcolm is pretty, could wheel. I mean, there's nothing much else for me to take, and this card can do some serious work, I think. Love me a Caracas. I don't have a lot of artifacts for the Talarian. Spiara's headquarters. I'll just take Caracas. Caracas is pretty absurd when you're just doing your thing with it. Kind of grouping all my expensive spells together. Now there's a Lion's Eye Diamond. <laughs> Go with my Underworld Breach. It might just be worth taking, because if I do get the third piece, the Brain Freeze, with like two cards left, it could just be game winning. I could also take a Savannah to give me better access to green, but I'll take Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm going to speculate. Gives me three picks at just having an excellent deck. Any brain freezes? No brain freezes. I have two packs left to look for it. Is Time Warp good in my deck? I don't really have any like big proactive plays that it would go well with. I can actually cast Omnath, so that could be good. Unfortunately, a lot of my green and white sources are kind of like paired up, 
So maybe casting it would be hard. I don't cast a lot of artifacts. Sneak attack doesn't do much. I think it might just be an Omnath pickup. Yeah, I'm going to try it at least. Wheel of Fortune doesn't really do much for me. Walking Ballista is just always solid, though. Do I make a lot of tokens? Not really. Yeah, I don't really make tokens other than Pest Infestation, so I'll just take the Ballista. Could take Restoration if I Gonjo. It can get Sacred Foundry or Rogren Chime. Oh, no, Basic Planes. This was my last chance at a Brain Freeze, which I did not get, but that's okay. Spellbinder is fine. I'm just going to take the land, though. And then we wield this blue-white land. Path to Exile could also be the pick. I have Get Lost, Council's Judgment, Palace Jailer. Yeah, I've got enough removal, I think. I'll take the Archive for my mana. Ooh, Trop came back. That's actually really good. That's real good. I only have one fetch land, which does make things a little bit trickier. I've got a lot of mana sources, though. The Olifant, the Eagles of the North are kind of like fetch lands. Um, I don't really want Waker. But I can at least use it. I'm not going to play Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm not going to play Underworld Breach. I don't have anything particularly great to like copy with Underworld Breach. So what can I play from the sideboard? Um, could play Grim Monolith, I guess. Avacyn's Judgment. Madness. Do I have a way to discard it? Currency Converter. Hmm. Oops, wrong one. Could also just be fine against aggro decks. non -limb permanent man, extra less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Probably don't want that. Savannah, get in my deck. My mana is actually pretty good because I have all these fetches and stuff. It's just my card quality is a little bit mediocre. To play Waker just for its two mana mode. Also synergizes with Currency Converter. Helps me fuel for Treasure Cruise. I could also just use this as a anti graveyard card, but I want to sideboard it, I think. Scale Lord is medium, I think. The Scale Lord plays well with some of my cards. Okay, sure, I'll take Tamiyo. Don't think I want it, though. Restoration of Iganjo. Not shocked to see that go last. Okie doke. Sort by color. Sort by mana value first, actually. Really a two drop. These are really both like one mana fixing. This is kind of like the way my curve is looking. I have a lot of free interaction spells. A lot of ways to shuffle my library. Um, hmm, Brainstorm is good with Tamiya because you guarantee hitting something. Restoration. Yeah, I don't really want that. Sort by color now. I think this will be my build. I don't have a lot of red cards. I've got a few. I only need double red in the late game for this thing. I can get one green for this. Double white for a couple of my cards. Um, These are kind of like mana sources. Let's just put them here. So if I just did this, I want as many blue sources as possible. Um, So I have one, two, three, four, five, six blue sources. I definitely want at least two more. 
So that gives me eight blue sources. Um, where did my islands go? Oh, there they are. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blue sources. White sources need to be next. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight white sources. So I can probably just be fine with that on white sources and get another blue in the deck. Um, sorry. And then I have for red, I have one, two, three, four, four red sources. Maybe one mountain wouldn't go amiss. Keeping in mind that even though it has 14 lands here, I also have two eagles of the north and a mox jet, so it's really 17 mana sources. And then green I have. Both of these can get green. No, this one can't get green. Yes, it can, because it can get savannah. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. The deck is perfect. I'm going to save it, and we'll see how it does in the games. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Volos. Patrons are those individuals who enjoy my content and decide to give back, support the channel, and help me make more videos in the future. There's a free tier over on the Patreon, so you can learn a bit more about it before deciding if you do want to join. But I do want to give a special shout out to those who do join, especially those at the credits level. It really does make a big difference and helps me make more videos. If you are enjoying my content, Patreon is the best way to support the channel and help me make more content going forward. But without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. Um, I think I can keep this. I've got a Stern Scolding. I've got all my colors. I've got Caracas, which can sometimes be really good. I think I'll lead with Raugrin Triome. Actually, no, I'll play Ketria first. Even though I don't have many green spells, because this will give me white on turn two if I need it. Perfect. Now I've got Stern Scolding up. I can play Rogrin Triome. Cycle Oliphant. Definitely think that's something I'll want to do. I'm not really scared of instants from this color combination. I will get Elegant Parlor. Because that gives me a nice little surveil. I'll do it before the Colonnade. I already have double blue. Graveyard. I don't need another land. I'd say this is going pretty well. They're also playing like a four color deck, maybe, or maybe they're just playing Naya. Darker Creature Enchantment. Sure. Yeah, I will get lost there. Sneak Attack. That seems worth it to me. Though Caracas probably shuts them down a little bit at least. I am going to play the Caracas now. Because if they have, like, Through the Breach as a backup plan, this is good against their Emrakul potentially. I could have played a Walking Ballista for X equals 1 there. Okay, I'm going to cycle Eagles of the North now. Get another Surveil Land. I'll keep that on top. It's a powerful spell. I'm really hoping they play a creature that I can, like, Phantasmal Image copy or counter with Stern Scolding. This Raging Ravine is going to get me. Yep. They hit a Swamp. So they're playing every color but blue.
I could cast a walking ballista for X equals two. Gonna hold off. I want to be able to hold up Caracas and Stern Scolding. Not that Stern Scolding matters as much when you have a Ballista in play, because you can just kill whatever they play. This part's going to kill me, which is really irritating. I couldn't really afford to save Get Lost for it. Talisman of Progress, sure. Ugh... That's the problem with Phantasmal Image when you don't have any of your own creatures. Sure. Let's see what we shall see. So we're going to be redrawing all of these cards in some order. Can't play Flame Tom Kava because it'll kill itself. I guess I'll just put back two lands. Maximize my options. Cast this for x equals 2. Proceed to take a million from Ra from Raging Ravine again. Pest Infestation can kill their Fast Bond and maybe... Uh... Oh my gosh. At least we get to fizzle their stomp because there will no longer be a target. So I don't have to deal with the, the giant. Yep. Down to three I go. I'm going to make some chump blockers with the pest infestation, but don't know how many kill a 7-7 seven, seven raging ravine. Especially because I know I'm drawing two uh, blanks coming up. Oh my gosh, I can destroy more than X. Oh, I'm so dumb. I just realized I could have made four more guys. Could have made X... To be equal to three, and then I could have made six guys. Oh well. There is some benefit to this, such as being able to just cast a subtlety. Mind twist. Well, shucks. So that was good for them. <laughs> it's unfortunate that I didn't draw my good counter spells for this, but now I'll just try to kill them. Seven, I still have a chump blocker for this guy. It's not a trampler. I'll just keep back two because no need to... I've got a three turn clock and I've actually leading the race, kind of. Oh. Well, that was unfortunate. Well, Stern Scolding didn't counter a dang thing, so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to bring in. Sun Gold Sentinel. Because we saw life death, and they usually aren't playing that for the life half. Okay, we will play first. If I'd made a bunch more 1 ones, I think I could have won that game. Um, I will keep this hand. Polyfont can fetch me something useful. 
like a blue source primarily. <laughs> So I get my blue and green mana. I already have white. I'll get my blue mana established so that I can potentially play a whole breacher if I need to. Flametone Kaba didn't seem great in the matchup either. And then I'll just activate my currency converter. I was hoping they wouldn't have that. No, I misclicked. Gosh darn it, currency converter. Your secret mode. I should have played my tap land there. Gosh darn it. Oh my gosh. Well, you live and you learn. I rushed it. Sure. Flash and Hole Breacher. I could have also played this land tapped and would have been way better. Play Parlor. Graveyard. Combat. Attack. Confluence. Two damage to each opponent, destroy target artifact. So they're going to be at 13, and they can't draw cards to get out of it. They'll have to kill my whole breacher first. And I can Phantasmal Image copying my whole breacher. I've got Force of Negation to protect myself. Yeah, I will counter that. Gosh, if I hadn't messed up this whole, this currency converter, I'd be in much better shape. I'll get rid of Flame Tongue Kavu. I would love to get that extra value, but I really just want to play Treasure Cruise this turn. I guess I can just do that next turn. Yeah, I want to get the extra value from my currency converter. As I'm gonna need a little bit of extra. I'm gonna need all the juice I can get here. They still have a lot of cards, and they had didn't play land last turn, so they. I know they're all spells. Okay, Flame Tongue Kavu to kill my whole Breacher is a good start for them. Draw three. That's a good card. And Dillion Click, I should have maybe tapped differently. I'm also get betting. I, I could have. The reason I put this down at the sorcerer speed was so I could treasure crease for less mana. 
I tap badly for that though, because being able to V-click them here would have been pretty good. Well, I know they don't have any lands in hand, so that's good to know. I can V-click -click them on draw step. Get lost is great as well. I only have two blues, and I want to use that for my Vendillion click, which I can conveniently bounce with Caracas. So... I'm just going to activate this now to draw a card and discard a card, because maybe I'll draw something I want. Hmm. I'm actually going to ditch Pest Infestation. Because this can give me an extra trigger on my currency converter. Which is going to be good for getting me an army that they can't deal with. Stomp. Sure. And Dillion click them. So they do have sneak attack for Inferno Titan, Kiki Jiki. Through the breaching, an Inferno Titan is not that bad for me, though. They have a great hand. I'm going to get rid of sneak attack. Actually, they don't have a land, so if they just play sneak attack, I can just kill it. So I don't really care about sneak attack. Fire Confluence is honestly the most annoying card. I could just leave them with everything. I mean, that could be okay. Because they can't cast much. They can cast Sneak Attack, which I'm okay with. They can cast Fiery Confluence to kill my Currency Converter. But then I just bounce my own Vendillion click. Yeah, I think Fiery Confluence is good enough that I don't want them to have it. It does open up their options if they draw a land here. Yeah. Oh, mind twist. Well, that's okay. I have my currency converter. Still bad, though. Shucks. Well... Attack them for three. They still can't do that much... So they don't draw land, there's only so much they can do. And they're going to be facing down a lot of damage this next turn anyway. I can bounce my Fendillion click and replay it. If they go for an Inferno Titan. And they don't have Fiery Confluence, which is good for me. Bone Crusher is their play. I think that means they're dead. Yep, I just need to use my currency converter correctly. Got him. Gotta be said, I'm a little bit worried about game three, but... Perfect. They were dead on board anyway. I just wanted to get an extra peek at their hand. Okay. Guardian Scale Lord. Tamio. I'm going to bring in Tamio just because they have Mind Twist. So in the late game, that could actually get them a little bit. It also fuels my graveyard. And Avacyn's Judgment doesn't seem like it's going to do much. They have a Flame Tongue Kavu, I guess, that it kills. Stern Scolding does counter Flame Tongue Kavu. We both seem to have, like, a lot of land, but they come into play tapped and stuff. 
which makes it trickier for them to like get off to a super fast start. And I do have a mox. If I could mox something out quickly, that'd be good. Starting with currency converter. Currency converter could be like my best start if I go currency converter, mox, oliphant cycle or something. I also have this scale lord I could consider. Scolding just doesn't seem good against the sneak attack deck. Restoration of Iganjo. I don't even have a basic planes, so that's out. And then, yeah, Scale Lord can get back some stuff. I kind of just want to get a True Name Nemesis down. I want to have a Force of Negation and a, or a Force of Will. Those cards are really good. And Palace Jailer could be really strong as well because they don't have a lot of pressure. I've got some good cards. I've got Brainstorm plus some Shuffle Effects. I think this deck is better than it looks. It's kind of like a four-color control deck. I felt pretty, like, I could feel, like, rusty while I was drafting it, where it was like, okay, I haven't drafted this new iteration of the cube yet. I haven't drafted the Vintage Cube in a while. It's good to get some, like, some good practice in. And I'm feeling pretty good about how we've we navigated it. I didn't really see any huge opportunities to try and do something broken. Like, we just saw, we took, like, a bunch of blue cards early. I tend to play Vintage Cube uh, a lot of the time, maybe too conservatively, where, like, I'll just take the cards that are the same color, but I am glad that I like speculated on that. Uh... Where is it? Where is it? My uh, pest infestation. Where is it? There's pest infestation. Where where was it on this one? Oh, it's all the way. It was all the way over here with the X spells. Yeah, treasure cruise is over here too. Walking ballista is also deeply medium, I think. But it's something I can do in the late game. This scrolling bar is not really built for speed, is it? Our opponent took all the time they could to come up with the sideboard plan. It does irritate me that it says you lost the die roll. I didn't lose the die roll. Or maybe I did, but okay. Well, this is not a keepable hand, obviously. This one is, though. We'll keep this and put back. We want both of these, I think. This will get our Triland. I might just put back Tamio. Turn four Omnath is pretty good, though. I'm just Phantasmal Image for now. Sure. They kept it on top. Okay, I will Meticulous Archive. I do want to keep that on top, even though it's not crazy. Being able to play turn three Tamiyo into turn four Omnath is pretty good. Okay, so this will be a turn to play the Currency Converter and my Fetch Land. And then next turn, I'm going to play Tamiya, which will protect me from uh, Fast Bond. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So that's all I could do there. So I can get a Triome, which I probably will do. I'll get the Triome that can produce green. And red. Play drop this, and this will protect me from mind twist. And I will plus what do I want to name? Is the question. So, in my deck, I'm going to name Force of Will. We milled Treasure Cruise. I almost named Treasure Cruise, but I can get it back with Tamiyo at some point. I milled some good ones. Bye. 
Bayou. I can... Hmm. There goes Tamio. Red, white, green, blue, Omnath in the house. And now I have Force of Negation up. Getting a true name down would be awesome. Uh, if they're mind twisting me, I'm going to be unhappy. Actually, I'm okay with that. Uh, I get three currency converter triggers. I was right to sideboard in the Tamio as, as tech. I would have loved to get True Name into play, though. Interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. Well, I'm going to keep Vendillion click so that I can draw Force of Will next turn. Maybe I was supposed to make a treasure, make another treasure. I didn't have the second treasure, I guess, at the time. Okay. Oh, no, I forgot to use my currency. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. It's going to cost me the game, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. Well, shucks. I'm just going to hold up my Force of Will now. Oh, that's so bad. Oh my gosh, because I could have looted into my Palace Jailer and killed their Blossoming guy, but I don't have double white without using this to get a treasure last turn. Um, Yeah, we will counter that. We will remember to use this now. Playing Vintage Cube just mechanically is difficult. Exile our Force of Will this time. Then we can exile our land on our turn. Get a treasure. To go white mana. This. White mana. Red mana. Palace Jailer. Exile Tortoise. Become Monarch. I would be able to Vendillion click them here, but I screwed it up with my treasures a couple turns ago. I mean, my deck has so many powerful cards in it, including a Mox. And they're dead next turn. I get to draw an extra card here. I didn't leave... I don't have any white mana available, I guess. Yep. It does not give them their guy back, because that's not how that works. But they can hit me, and then they'll get their guy back. If they, like, boot up their guy, their land, or whatever. Yep. They've lost through the breach and sneak attack. 
They're just going to try to win with their lands the old-fashioned way. So I get to draw a card. This game's getting intense. Get lost. Are they dead on board? No, not quite, but they can, they'll have to chump block. Play land. Gain four life. Plains. I still have double blue. Mountain. Kill this thing. I attack with everything. They have to block the Omnath and go to one. Wow, we're going to get them, I think. They also don't have Sneak Attack or Through the Breach, which are the two scariest cards. I might just end step the Vendillion click. And I'm the Monarch again. My Fire Confluence is gone. My Tamiya to get it back is gone. So I'm mostly afraid of a Board Sweeper. That's a good land. I think this actually does protect me the best. This is effectively a redraw that gains them four life. And they have a fetch land. Yeah, that can't be allowed to stay. Because they'll gain eight life and just have infinite time to stabilize. Now they have that they could just straight draw a land and then it wouldn't even matter what they have. But a lot of their scary spells are gone anyway. I knew they had the Avimaya. So they might just cycle their Triumph. No. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Oh, that's brutal. Oh, devastation. I don't think they can mess me up too hard, considering I only have a land here. Oh my gosh. Getting rid of Omnath into... Oh my gosh, they killed themselves with Fastball! <laughs> oh man, I don't think they could have done much. What was I going to draw? I draw a Hole Breacher. Yeah, they can't really do much. I get my second turn, I win. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, nice win there. I played that pretty mediumly, especially because I messed this card up, but we got the win. I'll see you next round. Welcome to another round. I think we keep this. It's not a great hand, but my deck is very fair, and so... Okay, maybe I'm just supposed to kill that with my Ballista on turn one. Probably am. It's so funny that this Mox Jet is the one color Mox that doesn't help me at all, but it's still a Mox, as we said. Yeah, I will just stop them from going for one to three, because... That just seems like it will buy me more time to draw my good cards. Leverage my Mox to be ahead on mana compared to them. Smuggler's Copter, sure. Well, that's going to be really good against Smuggler's Copter, so let's just play my Mountain and then pass the turn and hope they actually go for the Smuggler's Copter play. I guess they may draw a card. Also, I have Force of Will to protect it. Sure. We will try to stop them from doing anything here. So 
So they just get to hit me for a bit of a damage. That's what I was hoping to draw, actually. I think I'm just going to Meticulous Archive this turn. See what I'll hit here. Don't really want the click. Kill that, because next time I'm just going to start holding up Force of Will. I think they're missing lands? No, it's... They've hit every land drop and they have the Ram and Amp Excavator. I mean, their Smuggler's Copter was just hitting me for damage. I still have this Force of Will up. I'd prefer not to use it, because the next turn I can just start holding it up. Normal cast. Oh no, what's this? Ovalmald Oddity. Trample and haste. Yeah, I have plenty of removal. I have a flame tongue kavu. I can even like double block it. Now I might just double block it. Peatland is a good value engine. Well, that can't be allowed to happen. So I could double block it, and then they get to get their Nurturing Peatland engine online. Or I can double block it, attack them, Fiery Confluence. Perfect. I'm just going to ditch that guy from their repertoire here. I know I can't Force of Will right now, but if I survive this one whatever play they could make... I think don't think they've been really been playing around Force of Will. They just jammed that Nissa pretty aggressively. Uh-oh. That's a Nissa. Uh-oh. Spaghetti-o. So I'm going to lose now. Shucks. Oh, we were so close. We were playing this so interestingly, and, uh... That's cute, see? And I just used my council's judgment, so they couldn't start this engine. Yeah, they got me. Okay. Maybe I was supposed to wait on that just so I could hold a Force of Will another turn. In case they had one more good spell. Oh, that was tough. I'm just going to run it back, though. That was the sort of game that could go either way. Really Razor's Edge stuff there. If I had just held up the Force of Will that one extra turn and could have countered that Nissa, I think I would have won. We're going to start with our... Try them to get all of our color sources. Black Lotus, eh? And Mox Pearl. Oh my gosh. Well, that's ridiculous. Gotta be said, I'm not the biggest fan of that start. It uh feels pretty good to me to just play that on turn. Oh my gosh, and they have something else. Death Red Shaman, sure. That didn't feel very fair. Um, Yeah, those are just the sorts of games you lose sometimes in Vintage Cube. I don't have any white source I can get that's untapped. Other than Sacred Foundry. I have a few ways to get Sacred Foundry. I'm just going to kill their... Um,
mocks. I could have played a tapped land and then just tried to kill Nissa next turn. But I think I want to just try to top deck my Sacred Foundry or a way to get it. They have three mana access. No, they only have two mana access. Well, now they have three mana. Oh, now they have four mana. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get better life than this one. If I don't kill this soon, they're just going to fetch up every land in their deck. This gives me a chance to draw Fiery Confluence. So I will do that, and then I'll cycle this Ketria Triome. Because if I draw Fiery Confluence, I guess I still have to kill the Nyssa first. Mm, yeah, this is bad. <laughs> they played turn one Nyssa, though, to, on, to be fair. And my mana was a bit clunky. Though, to be fair, my mana is always clunky. I guess I really needed to win game one. It was close, though. Game one was very close. With different play, I definitely could have won game one. Well, that's probably going to be game winning. Let's just cycle this to see if we find an answer that's not in our deck. Caracas would have been good because that would have been able to let me cast Council's Judgment. So, yeah, I'm dead. Well, that was a bit of a brutal game too, but game one was really close and uh, could have gone either way. So I could have totally won this match, I think. Anyway, maybe I was just supposed to like leave the Mox Pearl alone. That could have been a better line, just like kill the Nissa as soon as possible. I still think I lose, but would have been closer. Anyway, see you folks in round three. Let's try to scrap out a 2-1. Welcome to the final round. Let's go. Oh, I can keep this. I have Eagles of the North. Brainstorm to go. Brainstorm Eagles. I've got Force of Will, Hole Breacher. I think I will Brainstorm first and then shuffle away the cards I don't want. Depending on what I see on turn one. Because Avacyn's Judgment is definitely the sort of card that could be hit or miss. And maybe, okay, so there is Currency Converter, Flame Tongue Cavu, Treasure of Clues. Well, I don't think I want Avacyn's Judgment that much. I don't really want the Currency Converter since I'm uh, going to have to use the Eagles of the North here. Actually, I'll play the Converter after Eagles of the North. They're going to be on to me here. I'm just going to get rid of... Hmm, hmm. These two. And then I'll redraw the Flame Tongue Kavu, I guess. So I can get Raw Grand Triumph. Actually, I can get M Elegant Parlor. Which won't let me cast Currency Converter, which will help me find a land. Graveyard. This was an interesting way to try and find my lands. Brainstorm not finding a single land. Elegant Parlor surveilling one. I don't have that many lands left in the deck. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. <laughs> Big draw. That was it. That's the ticket. I will currency converter. And I will do the proper mode this time. And I will ditch the... Mm, I'll ditch that one. They don't currently have anything I can cast it on. It's a good card, though. Don't get me wrong. Next turn I can cast Hole Breacher, no matter what happens. It was potentially correct to just hold up Hole Breacher this turn, but these colors don't always draw cards as much. They're not playing blue. Douthy. Okay, well, now I really want to draw a land to Flame Tongue copy that. We did not hit.
Yeah, I could have subtletied it, but I didn't think that was really worth it. Because I have this flame tongue, which is such a clean answer. Sure. Um, sure. So I can draw a card and discard a card, but then they get to exile it, so I'm just going to put a thing into play. Okay. Play Hull Breacher, they can kill it. Land. That's a land. That can even bounce Rona, which is pretty good. Play Flame Tonkavu. Kill Douthy. Combat. They're going to use this, but might as well. I uh, can't get in for any damage here. Might as well trade force this trade on my turn when they're tapped out, because they can always trade it on their turn. Okay, and since they didn't want to do that, I get three damage in. Perfect. And I have two free counter spells. True name's gonna be hard to cast here. If the opponent's creature would die, exile it instead. So they get to exile my whole breacher. I kind of want to keep this true name nemesis. Um, yeah, Misery Shadows is big. I kind of want to get rid of that permanently. I'm going to exile Subtlety, I think. This true name is going to win me the game, I think, at the end of the day. They kill Flame Tonkavu. That's crazy to me. Well, that's good. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, I will activate this. Discard. It's funny because I'm going to discard this card and then I'm not even going to use it. Oh, it's so tempting to just use this here. Okay, I can't resist, mate. I just want to see how this works. Oh, and I get to exile it. Thank you very much. No, I don't get to. Okay, I didn't think I get to. I thought I, I I was pretty sure it would treat it as a different entity. Not holding up Caracas. Caracas is very troll here. Okay. Because now they could just like reanimate me out with something, and I can't bounce it. I'm prepared to be max punished for my experimental play. Okay, Pentad Prism, sure. There an Epicure, sure. Season Pyro. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good. I don't have a way to use my graveyard, so because I, I don't have Tamiya in my deck, so I can just single mana free roll this. Uh, 
Okay, that is a good card. We will use it next turn after we get this thing rolling. Protection from you. I want to get them down to a multiple of two in, in terms of life total. I can just keep bouncing my own Omnath, which is great too. They get rid of a Talisman. Being able to bounce any potential legendaries is so huge. Ruby, sure. Academy. Yikes. I'm feeling like I'm favored in this game, which is awesome. This game is... My deck is just grinding out wins. Okay, top. Okay, sure. Yeah, they're, they're definitely supposed to spin the top to see if they have a good card on the top that they want to play this turn. My life total is about to get seriously out of control. Blue, green, red, white. Because I've got protection up for this. I don't want a five turn clock. They don't have the mana to bring these things back. So next turn they're drawing top. Or is it like a ponder or something. Ah, this game is getting intense. They found treasure cruise on top. I know one of the cards is a top. What? Well, that's terrifying. They get to investigate four times. I will ditch the Sacred Foundry. Yes, use the ability. Okay. Well, that's a draw. Planes. Planes, that, that. Palace, a Jailer. Exile that guy. Play a land and then i will not attack this turn because i really just want to preserve the monarchy meticulous archive i'm trying not to crack this fetch because i want it to be good with omnath but if I was going to discard a land, I would rather discard the island. Okay. I could have definitely attacked, but then a removal spell lets them get past my defenses and seize the monarchy, which is really how I'm going to compete with these clue tokens. Wow, they really chained some stuff together. They went top into last card, into treasure cruise, into that crazy guy that just made four clues. And then I got the Palace Jailer off the top. Just ripped it clean off the top. And now it's going to just come down to who has better cards left. I already used a bunch of my counter magic. Force of Will and Subtlety. So when a land enters, yeah, you're not going to be able to do it for the third time.
Deep Cavern Bad is annoying. Could be really bad for me. That was kind of my plan. That I will loot. Ditch the island. Yes. Draw. That's a good card. Do I have the mana? One, two, three, and then Council's Judgment, their Cavern Bat. None of their lands can attack. Kill their bat. Their bat is really annoying against the monarchy stuff. One damage to each opponent, so I can just bounce this guy. Phantasmal image is perfect. I should have done this first, but... So now I have two true name MSI. Oh my gosh, this is such a battle. I get to draw an extra card here. They know my entire hand except for this new card. Oh, and Ballista can kill them next turn. Oh my gosh, what an insane battle this has been. Oh, what are they casting? Shieldred. Okay. They're going to gain some life. No! No! <laughs> oh! No! I lose. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. I was so close. If I just had held up my stupid Caracas. Oh my gosh. I got greedy. I just needed to hold up Caracas and I win that game so easily. Gosh darn. I'm going to bring in Sun Gold Sentinel because I know they have um, a treasure cruise. I remember this did like two damage to one small thing. I don't think it really matters that much. Oh my gosh, that was my game to win, and I botched it. I just need to hold up my Caracas, and I win, and oh my gosh. But that's the thing about Vintage Cube. You live and you learn. I wasn't sure. I mean, that was a pretty specific subset of cards for them to have. I'm just going to get my blue-white land here so I can get a Surveil in. Gosh, that was tilting. Oh my gosh. If I had had... If I, I could have... Kept an untapped land so I could hold up my Caracas. But I kept the Surveil land instead. Max punished. I'll put that in my graveyard. Though I guess I could have used it to hold up Force of Negation. I'll definitely keep that guy on top. That guy's great. Ugh, man, what a crazy game that was. I thought I was winning for sure, and then I wasn't winning, and then... And then I was winning, and then I choked it. If I had named Shieldred, if I had been playing around Shieldred Wheel, 
as like their last couple of cards. I mean, I was trying to just pressure them with the max. I sh could have just held up Caracas. I mean, that was kind of like a judgment call, I guess, at the end of the day. Sure. They get a blood token. I'm just going to go max aggression here. Because I do have so much good stuff going on. Palace Jailer can exile a lot of things, but I'm going to just get rid of the Blood Tithe Harvester. Give myself the Monarchy, and if I draw a blue card, I can even Force of Negation their next play. And I have Get Lost. So I think I'm in an okay shape here. Blue card? I'd love a blue card. Blue card, please. Because if I can counter their next play, I'm in real good shape. Either way, I can like get lost. I mean, oh, that's a perfect, perfect draw. Because I can either force of negation their next big play, or I can just use get lost at some point. I guess I can't kill a bat. The bat is kind of a problem for me here. Because they'll just take get lost with it. No! What did this guy do? Does he have haste? Text each combat of Abel. Okay, it does not have haste. Oh, that's a cool combo. Nice. And now I can just start I can just hold up hard casting force of negation. Get lost, Ravager. It would have been potentially good for me to just make them discard their entire hand to die to a true name, but I don't want to risk anything here. I've kind of got this game in a really good spot. Like, Force of Negation protects me from a lot of the stuff they could have. As does Venser, potentially bouncing a problematic thing. I'm drawing extra cards. So, maybe I was supposed to let them attack into my true name, kill their guy for free. It might just be playing scared to not just do that. Because they lose their entire hand. But I worry about what they could have. As like, they wouldn't have played that if they didn't mind discarding. I mean, because it was all face up on the board that they were going to have to do that. So maybe that means their hand is garbage. Or something like that. Sure. Douthy, sure. Sure. They didn't cast a single spell into this. Um, hmm. So I could cast Omnath, play land, then attack with both. I kind of just want to use Venser to bounce the Dothy. No need for me to do anything on my upkeep. Subtlety. Okay. Well then. So... Attack with both. Play Venser. To bounce... Misery Shadow. I don't actually have to attack at all. But I kind of need to play Venser to bounce Dothy. So I can just do this. And hold back True Name for a turn. Because I don't really want to have to just chump block with Venser. The crazy thing here is if they go for the Misery Shadow block here, they could try to do that so they could play it their own with the Douthy. Um, oh, did I forget to play a land? Oh my gosh, I'm so bad. Oh, I got too much excitement in me. I need to focus more. Okay. Play Venser. Okay. 
Bounce Dothy. I will counter all the way back down because I have so many extra cards. Exile Waker of Waves, cast the Subtlety. It will get exiled by Misery Shadow. They can also choose to redraw it thanks to the uh, Sensei Divining Top. Put it on top, sure. I'm shocked they didn't just use top, replay it. Oh, they are doing that, okay. But they don't want the top anymore. Vendillion click. So I can't play click and hard ca and cast that without exiling a thing. But I do want to cast click. So they're going to take the Monarchy. Force of Will. Well, that's good. Because that means I can protect my click from basically anything. And just kill them. They get Blood Tithe back. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be allowed to happen, my friend. Cast that. Ditch Treasure Cruise. Let's just get maximum information on what's in their hand. Also, while having Force of Negation backup. Ooh, head into the final game. Okay, I definitely do want this Avacyn's Judgment. Change of plan. They have so many cards that it's good against. I should have realized that earlier. Um, this card could be okay, but they do exile a lot of stuff, and I exile my own graveyard a bit. I think I could just get rid of Waker of Waves, maybe. Fast Infestation might not be the best. But I don't really want to have Waker of Waves against Dothy. Okay, on the draw. We got True Name. We got Eagles of the North. We're going to keep this one. This is a good hand. True Name into Palace Jailer is another good start here. Hopefully we draw a Mox. That would be perfect. I think we're going to just lead with the Colonnade because we're going to want to play Colonnade at some point, And this gives us um, better odds to uh, hit like Currency Converter or something for the Dream Start. I don't have any of my free counter magic, which is unfortunate, but it could, it happens. No, they have a Mox. Okay. Oh, they don't have a land, though. So now I can just play both of my guys out, which is nice. I'm just going to cycle this, get a um, archive, I think. Actually, no, I need red mana. Yeah, I'll still be able to play both on turn. Get the parlor. Good thing I have that second stop set, because I almost forgot to play my land again. I do not need that. Put that in the graveyard. 
Just fueling my crews, potentially. So they don't... They did draw land. So they have all spells in hand. Prism. Okay. They're trying to ramp out something big. Which terrifies me. If this is Misery Shadow, I'm actually okay with that. Because I have a great blocker for it. I wish I would feel so much safer with a force of will, of course. So I know they have two spells in hand. If it's like a Carnosaur, it's kind of a problem. Liliana. Ooh, that's an ouch if it's a Liliana. Shieldred, that's fine. I can beat a Shieldred. I just have to Palace Jailer it. Yep. Get me. Literally the same start as last game. I am the Monarch. No way I'm attacking because I don't want them to get back their Shieldred. Hopefully I draw Force of Will. They can Carnosaur if they have it. No, of course they have Carnosaur. Ah! <laughs> oh! Oh, please don't have a good hit. It would be such a nightmare if I have to Venser their Carnosaur. Okay, Evolve Sleeper. Okay. They concede! Yes! Oh, ho, ho, ho! what a win! Oh my gosh, we battled it out. Oh my gosh, let's just get to our previous deck. Nice victory for the home team there. Way to kick off Vintage Cube Season with style. I mean, let's just talk through this deck a little bit. I mean, obviously there's some cards hidden behind me. There are... The Treasure Cruise was pretty good. The Force of... I mean, the Eagles of the North and the Oliphant definitely did work just fixing my mana and being just like fuel for Treasure Cruise. Force of Will was great. I loved drawing that one. Force of Negation, we saw the downside a couple times, but that was great. True Name Nemesis, fantastic. Palace Jailer, fantastic. Uh, we saw Omnath do some stuff. We had that one game we lost because we went for the Phantasmal Image, which was funny, but Currency Converter was honestly excellent. The Mox was great. This deck felt really smooth, really fun to play. It was a lot of colors, had a lot of powerful spells, and uh, even though it didn't have anything like too powerful going on, it was able to just scrap out those wins and then leverage some free counter magic to just protect its win condition. So really awesome draft. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did make it all the way to the end of the video, leave hashtag force in the comment section down below because we had both forces and subtleties. So force nation over here. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it in the comment section down below. Let me know if you do want to see more vintage cube drafts in the future. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you next time.